What's going on YouTube? Wild Lion Games here and we have an honest review of FC25 coming from a casual soccer fan perspective. Let's begin. FIFA, ex excuse me, FC has always been pretty impressive on the graphic front. I still remember going to an Xbox One event back in, uh, in, in I don't know, October of 2013 in Atlanta. It was before the Xbox One released and we got to get our hands on titles like Dead Rising 3, Battlefield 4, uh, Rise, Son of Rome, and even FIFA. I remember it impressing me at the time was the point. The stadium lighting was awesome. And look, I even made this like Facebook post back in the day about how smooth the gameplay was and how it was great, blah, blah, blah. But to this day, I still think it looks good. And while I don't see an improvement from FC24 to FC25 and, you know, player models, grass, and stadiums, everything is still impressively detailed, including the fans in the stadiums. You know, they don't look like zombies or mannequins like they do in the college football game. Uh, and I also enjoy some of the smaller details like security guards uh, lining the perimeter of the field and like the camera ops and the different water effects on the ground when it's raining out. Like, there isn't much to complain about here. The dynamic lighting of the various stadiums, whether you know they have like a partial roof and the way the sun shines onto the field in certain areas and then it kind of goes away towards you know the second half of the game, you know, it doesn't wow me by any stretch of the means, but I also haven't personally experienced any weird bugs and glitches uh, in the graphics department on the PS5. Presentation and sound. The review is already pretty long, so I'm gonna keep this one pretty short because there's, again, not too much to talk about here. The presentation is, it's there for what it is, it's good. Um, you know, you have some cool cutscenes, and the cutscenes kind of have some nice variety to them of you know, security setting up gates or like walking through the tunnels under the stadium or maybe it's fans chanting, walking into the stadium, you know, they're out in the streets. So you have a nice variety of cutscenes uh, and the intro and the, you know, post game and everything is pretty short. Uh, there's no halftime. I find the commentary to be pretty weak, uh, in my honest opinion. They do an overall good job. It is better than other sports titles, but the, the lack of contextual, like, specificity with what they're saying to what's happening in the game uh, just doesn't really exist you know you could have a crazy six goal game and you know the announcers react the same way as if the score was one to zero real opportunity and it's there and he's put that one away very nicely indeed commentary leaves a lot to be desired and i wish this was something that you know we could see progress uh in sports titles gameplay so the most important part of a game is gameplay you know it needs to be an enjoyable experience especially in a sports game when you know you don't have uh intricate puzzles and you don't have like an in-depth storyline that keeps you going you know a, a single player you know action adventure shooter game they can get by with okay mechanics if the story's really good right uh an fc25 is a lot of fun and it is much less frustrating than FC24. My biggest annoyance in FC24 was players not helping me out and getting themselves into open space and oftentimes just standing around waiting for my user input for them to do something helpful. Uh, the player movement was always a little blocky and as if I had like microseconds of input lag uh, when using them. Where now FC25 improves is more intelligent AI uh, that will find open space and help pick up forwards on the attack instead of them, you know, letting them run by on an easy chance to score. Uh, the player movement is more responsive, it's fluid with quicker movements. Uh, however, in return, I do think they feel floaty is not really the right word, but it's kind of like they're just filled with hot air. Although it's much better than the alternative, like NHL 24, where all the players feel like they weigh 300 pounds running in sand. Uh, I also noticed there's a much larger difference in gameplay between the skill levels of the team. So when I'm playing as FC Ka, players were definitely slower, not as reactive. It's almost like, you know, when I'm sprinting one way and I, you know, quickly try and turn the other way, it takes, it takes a minute for their feet to gather underneath them. But when I switch to Bayern Munich, I could instantly feel the difference in finesse from those higher skilled players. Dribbling is definitely more difficult in FC25, which for a casual like me is going to take getting used to when in FC24 I could count on just using the left stick to dribble through defenders and penetrating their tackle attempts with, 
without much other controller input. Left stick dribbling in FC25 is only gonna get you so far on the higher difficulties, and you're definitely gonna need to utilize some of those other alternative dribbling methods available to have success, especially if you're playing online. For me, personally, you know, pro is the perfect difficulty to focus on, like, focus a little bit and be able to win games. Uh, I do notice the defensive AI is pretty unintelligent and they leave wide open passing lanes. Uh, they kind of just shadow you, you know, when you're like sprinting by them uh, when you're in pro mode. So it's definitely more of like a chill uh, way to play the game. Moving up to world class turned me into a sweat since the AI actually knew how to play defense and my lazy passes that I was making a habit were being easily intercepted. I had to play a lot more thoughtful as I noticed the AI would adapt to what I was doing and the tactics I chose to play with actually mattered. Uh, this difficulty in world class I think is where FC25 shines the most uh, when it comes to replicating soccer in the video game format. The skill level of the players matter and the user stick skill matters even more. I'm probably just going to stick to pros so I can chill and have fun. But that's honestly my recommendation for anyone new picking up this game is start on an easier difficulty like amateur, figure out the basics, move up to semi-pro, and then eventually pro and if you want to even world class and higher. Uh, as you level up the difficulty in the game, uh, I think FC25 actually plays better because the AI isn't giving you so many assists by just kind of being dumb. <laughs> also the introduction of tactics being able to be changed on the fly using the D-pad I really like that a lot and it's a nice addition from FC24, you know, being able to come into a game with a sheet of tactics and then on the fly make an adjustment if what I'm seeing isn't working. Like I was using the ticky tack style with FC Car, wasn't getting anywhere on offense so I switched to a, uh, a custom formation that had a counter attack uh, focused tactic and notice my forwards were now making more aggressive runs for through balls and I was able to generate more offensive pressure. Uh, the, I, one thing I did notice, the refs tend to give out a lot of yellow cards and red cards pretty often. I mean, almost every game I've played has had a red card, and there's always yellow cards in every single game, which feels pretty high. It's like almost every slide tackle uh, that results in a whistle also results in a yellow card rather than just like a whistle with a free kick. Uh, but long story short for gameplay is put it on simulation, world-class difficulty for the best experience, it's definitely a step forward from FC24, a noticeable step forward from FC24. Clubs Rush. It's a new 5v5 mode added to the clubs mode this year, and it's also available in kickoff mode as well if you want to play it outside of clubs, but it's a 5v5 game on a smaller field that runs seven minutes long, and all 10 players on the field are controlled by real users. So everyone minus the goalie. And like in any online mode that involves teamwork, Teamwork doesn't exist, and it's a, it's apparent how little soccer knowledge most FIFA players have. I mean, it is crazy. No one understands positioning. No one wants to help play defense, and maintaining possession on offense is a strategy in a foreign land in this mode. I mean, it's like everyone who plays Rush thinks that they're the main character, and they don't want to work as a unit. It's nothing to the game's fault. I think it's a really fun way to play clubs and I enjoy it more than the 11 versus 11 style where you got players mixed in with the computer, but damn, it can be frustrating to play. Uh, what I think EA can do to help out is provide more XP and like teammate grade bonuses for playing defense and having good positioning on the field with proper spacing. Uh, I think defensive stops and successful tackles and clearing the ball out should be worth more to your performance grade than what it currently is. That alone, I think, would create a more balanced way to play the game as people can level up in ways besides scoring goals and getting assists. I mean, I'm tired of seeing guys dribble themselves into the corner of the field with three defenders on them and just like thinks he can just out dribble everybody. I mean, that's how you lose all the time. I'm 0 7. My record is 0 7 in clubs mode. But despite all this, it's still fun. I don't think I'll see myself spending too much time here but I still do enjoy it, and I think for those who like clubs, you're really gonna enjoy this 5v5 mode. I really do think it's what clubs was made for, was this type of uh, this type of speed of the game. The single greatest part about clubs is you can make an impact right away. Unlike NBA 2K, which is basically a Ben Simmons simulator, unless you shell out an extra $50, $60 uh, to make your players serviceable, in FC clubs, you can be serviceable and help the team right away, and you can instantly begin earning XP boosts 
to your attributes. I mean, I played, I start off at an 80 overall, and then I have, you know, 16 attribute points within seven games, and I can be an 81 overall. I mean, it's awesome. This is how it should be done. I don't have to, there's no microtransactions in clubs, and it's great. So if you're looking for that, like, online kind of uh like you know if you're looking for something like that like 2k where you can squad up with other players and play games but you don't want to shell out extra money fifa's the way to go or excuse me fc is the way to go because 5v5 clubs is great you can be good right away and then it comes down to six skills and working with a good team after that i haven't been able to explore the like club relegation system yet because well I'm 0 and 7, <laughs> and uh, I haven't been able to join or create any clubs uh, due to connection issues. But I imagine that that's either going to be fixed when the game officially launches, or it's because I'm playing on like the EA trial, and so I'm not therefore allowed to join or create any clubs. That's my guess. But the new clubs mode and the menu design of the locker room is a welcome change to the mode, and I think will keep fans on for longer. Uh, my one real critique outside of the XP is to change the game length. Seven minutes is a long time. I think we can get by with five or six. Usually by the fifth minute, I'm kind of looking for the game to be over. So I think we can shorten the matches, but maybe that's just me. Manager mode. Manager mode in FC25 isn't any different from what I can tell at the moment from FC24. But for those of you who might be new to uh, FC, let me catch you up on what I think is a pretty exciting manager mode, aka franchise mode for you know you Madden fans and just like if you haven't played FIFA right so first let's get the negatives out of the way uh that's the menu design for manager mode I don't like how social media takes up half the home page and yet the league fixtures is hidden in like some other front office page that I gotta like roll over to forever to find social media is not that important in all honesty it should just be like a right trigger or a right stick movement to pull it up not half the screen the new design feels weird and it takes forever to get around to where you want to go and the calendar with your team's schedule is buried among several tabs along with the player stats and standings which is highly annoying uh the second bad is no historical stats for your league or around the globe in other leagues there's no way to view a player's career stats in the player card to see how he's progressed uh, there's no league history of previous winners at the cup and no league history of records no historical player records like most goals in a game or most goals in a game by a franchise uh, i can't see previous winners of the bonus league i can't see who the all-time scorer is i can't even see how many championships i've won it's it's a little ridiculous to have a manager mode where you're supposed to be creating this franchise and yet i can't even see the history of the league i'm in or see if a player i have is on route to break a goal scoring record or something now on to the good things that is youth development scouting tactics and coach management this is what all makes manager mode really fun and it all works together very seamlessly too so being able to adjust training plans for your players and how you want to specifically develop them gives the user a lot of control over the type of players they want on their team and the type of tactics they want to build around so i can select a player from my roster adjust the training plan for him and it'll show me how long it's going to take for that player to level up in his attributes and which areas he will see in improvements as well then when i go to the tactics screen i'm able to mess around with formations and play styles and I can match the players I have on my roster to the play styles that'll work and I receive visual cues when something negatively impacts a player of mine or when a tactic provides a, bo a positive or negative boost you know, to uh, their attributes. And you can also kind of change the type of uh, style they play their position. So I can select you know, my right back and then pick of like how he covers the field. And same with my forwards, I can choose their own specific offensive strategy. So you can like really nail down the nitty gritty details uh, to really help, you know, the computer assist you along the way you like to play the game. It's all very, very cool. When it comes to scouting, you can send scouts all across the globe to find players in almost any country you can think of. And you can give them notes on what you want them to look at and what positions to check out as well. And either, you know, you can keep them in one country for, you know, three months, six months, a whole year, uh, or you can move them to another country, but that's gonna cost you, you know, a few days of travel. Uh, what's cool about the scouting in FC is when you send a scout to a region, he comes back with a group of players that meet the criteria you gave him. And if any of the players that, you know, when you're looking at that initial report, if they stand out, 
you can choose to have your scout further evaluate that player and get a more accurate reading. And if you don't like the initial report, you can also just remove that player from your list entirely. Youth development scouting works the same. It's just now you have a scout that's focused more on youth players to try and pull them into your program. And then you can also train your younger players the same way you train your pro team so that you can prepare them for your team. And you can also, again, adjust their training regimen and teach them new skills and even potentially change their positions uh, so that they can develop into the players that you need them to be. You know, when they're 14, 15, then when they hit the right age or the right skill level, you can bring them up to the pros. And youth development is crucial because you're, you basically are building your own pipeline of talent to pull up for the pro team. Uh, the coach and tactic management is just an easy way to boost player performance. Within a tactic, you know, you can hire a wide variety of staff members to help boost your team. So I can go in here and I can filter coach vision by the tactics that align with my own. And then I can even start hiring coaches with expert knowledge in that tactic. And or, you know, if they just have high coach skills within certain aspects like the midfielders or attack or defense. Uh, tactical knowledge from a coach will boost their overall rating and then like their skills rating will have an impact on how quickly uh, they develop in their positions as well. Everything in the manager mode from a team management standpoint just makes sense. Youth development to scouting to game planning, it all works together, it's all cohesive, and it's something missing in other titles like EA's Madden. Uh, I really do think that this is like a great talking point of just how much of a mess everything is in Madden, how much of a mess training is, how much of a mess game planning is, how much of a mess scouting is, how none of it correlates with each other in Madden. And FC is like the complete opposite like all of it really works together and there's just some things that you know again it's the same mode it's been for the last couple titles so like i would like to see some nice updates to manager mode uh rather than uh the same thing that we that we've been looking at the last few years however if manager mode is your thing in like sports games i would definitely suggest checking this out or at least go check out fc24 since it's going to be heavily discounted now player career so then we have player career which is exactly what it sounds like you create a player control them during a career and you work your way to the top and this is another fun mode that i think madden superstar mode can take note of uh but it's not perfect and it also still lacks innovation uh new to fc25 however is the ability to have a backstory for your player uh, so you can play it as normal or you can choose a backstory that changes your player's starting age skills and abilities so you can be like an older player trying to make a comeback from an injury. You could be like a young hotshot with like a deep soccer family history with lots of expectations, or maybe like a nobody who's worked their way from the bottom to uh, earn their spot. The cool thing is it's not just a backstory, but it actually gives you attribute points to assign yourself like right out the gate. Uh, but if that's not something you want, you can always just start, you know, bland and basic how you always have in the, in the previous games. Other than that, you know, player career is the same. The The pro camera angle isn't good. Uh, I wish it was player locked instead of ball locked, meaning that currently the focal point is on the area of play and not your actual player, when instead I think the camera focus should be centered on your player. And when the play moves further away, the camera just kind of like pulls up its head. But very often I've actually lost where my player is on the pitch due to me, you know, watching the play and watching what's happening with the ball. I do really like the contract system and how it works in FC25. You get paid a certain amount of money and if you want to keep making that kind of money, you have to reach certain expectations. And if you want to make more money or you want to transfer to a new team, you'll have benchmarks to reach in order for that increase of pay to happen. You can then use your contract money in various ways like donating to charities, investing in a youth sports club, buying yourself a foot massage, or even a sauna among dozens and dozens and dozens of other items. Some items like a new apartment or headphones only really increase your personality type, while other items like buying a treadmill have a more functional effect, like giving you a performance boost and earning XP faster, or maybe increasing your stamina by 1%. It's very similar to what NHL does in their career mode, but I think NHL implements this a little bit better by providing functionality to all the items, making it worth spending your money. Whereas in FC25, it kind of feels like I'm just buying it to buy it, like a completionist type of thing. You know, like I just want to buy this item to take it off the menu, if that makes sense, but I don't actually think I need it. 
Uh, an easy way to work around this, I think, from you know, for the developers at EA is by having a teammate grade and some sort of like fandom metric where you know maybe spending money on the sports car increases like my followers on social media or like increases my fan base but but that's it and then like you know whereas spending the money on a home gym uh, or the treadmill might increase my ability to earn xp or i can choose to buy teammates a gift that improves morale something along those lines just to give it something other than just like okay yep check that off and to continue on that is the uh the activities that you sometimes get and it's kind of funny because you can just do all the activities they don't go away so when you're presented you know with activities like read a book from a you know from a retired pro soccer player or you can go to some interview you can actually do both like i kind of thought it was going to be like a pick and choose situation like in road to glory where you know you have x amount of action points each week and you can spend that time studying doing extra training working on nil deals uh but you can't do everything right so in fc 25 it's kind of crazy that they give you these activities to do but then you can again you know it kind of just sort of feels like it's actions to complete just to like remove that notification off the screen so there's no real like professional athlete off the field life to take care of it's just like again tasks to complete uh it's a cool concept it definitely provides way more depth than a madden superstar mode uh, but with this many years having all these features built into player career, I was kind of hoping by this time we'd see some improvements to these features. The lack of all-time leader stats is once again a disappointment because I can't track my all-time stats against other greats. I can see my own career stats, but it's not like I have any goals to chase after outside of my own personal goals, which is another disappointment. You know, I kind of think people like to play career modes in sports games to like fulfill their dreams of being an all-time great athlete uh but you know when you go and you score six goals in a game and the commentators don't make a mention of it and i can't see any like record books of the most goals scored in a single game by an mls player uh it's kind of a buzzkill player customization kind of falls within you know the player career mode and a little bit of rush too but holy cow dude guys player creator is the best player creation i've ever seen in a game like this is phenomenal one of the really fun things about playing rpgs like you know skyrim or fallout is like getting to create a character of your liking and like have all these different options and i mean the the cranium technology that they were advertising for fc25 i kind of thought was just like a marketing scheme i did what cranium tech that's what we're like making stuff up now no no this this is an incredible feat when it comes to player customization with the amount of details and adjustments you can make to the player model's head and face, get into the advanced sculpting area and select different parts of your face, like the chin. You have the lower chin and the middle chin and the upper chin, and then you can change all these different features of it, and the same goes with the nose, and you can change the symmetry of your face by adjusting things slightly over to the right and to the left. and it deserves a shout out for sure. It really deserves a shout out in this review. Seasons Mode. Seasons Mode is a online competitive play with, it's a nice structure. You play 10 games against other players and reaching nine wins will earn you a promotion to the next division and a chance to play for the cup of your current division. A bad season will relegate you down a division while it essentially works the same as any other ranked mode such as Rocket League or Fortnite, you know, where you play on like, bronze three two one and silver three two one it's kind of the same thing uh it's very easily laid out if you know a simpleton like me <laughs> can understand what's going on uh the best part though is i can play at my own pace uh unlike a game like super mega baseball in the pennant race mode where i have to make sure i play consistently week to week because like the seasons reset every sunday which is a cool idea but dude like life is way too busy to dedicate all my time to one game uh, it's a cool feature. I really like Seasons Mode a lot and how you can do it at your own pace. And the other cool thing with Seasons Mode is it's co-op, so you can do this journey with a friend if you want. Tournaments Mode is exactly what it sounds like. Gives you the ability to play in various tournaments like the Premier League and even the 3F Superliga. Uh, UEFA Championship is available along with uh, international women's tournaments. And if none of those suit your fancy, you can even create your own tournament with your own rules, your own trophy type, your own team types. Essentially, you could recreate the World Cup if you wanted to. You just 
won't have the World Cup trophy due to trademark issues with FIFA. Uh, it's only single player, but I do think the next evolution should be multiplayer tournaments where you and a few friends can play in a tournament together, you know, set one up, put yourselves in the same group if you want to do group play or put yourselves in different groups. Uh, it's not like tournaments is new to FC, so I'm not sure why this hasn't been added in yet, because I personally think like a multiplayer tournament mode would be a fun way to play with friends. And then kickoff mode is great, you know, I mean, it has the classics that, you know, you just play, play now, but it also has 5v5 rush and the 3v3 mode that plays more like indoor soccer. And uh, they added some new maps, like, a, you know, they have like a New York field, which has like a terrible backdrop of Manhattan, but you know, whatever, that's not the focus. Uh, the goals are way too large though. I think they need to go back to the smaller goals in FC24's 3v3 mode, because that you can score way too easily in 3v3 in kickoff mode. Um, you can also play home and away series and a best of three and a best of five series, which is great uh, because not only does this kind of like change up the pace of playing soccer, but I also like this for like couch games, you know, when you're always competing with friends and you know, you beat a game, you, you beat them and then you gotta go back out to the main menu because he's like, oh no, you were the home team and now I wanna play as the home team. So you can just have it set up so it's a home and away series or you can like settle the score with like a best of three or a best of five series so you don't have to exit back out to the main menu. It's really, it's just nicely done. And uh, I know it's been in FIFA before, but again, I'm also trying to inform newcomers like, hey, these are some of the features that this game has. Like it keeps track of uh, your records. And speaking of stat tracking, I could go on about like the match uh, stat tracking in this game. It's pretty incredible how you can, you know, look at uh, where on the field you're possessing the ball, like where you're having success shooting and passing and you can break it down individually by player. I mean, you know, when Madden advertised that they were going to provide next gen stats for the, or sorry, when EA uh, said that they were going to provide next gen stats for Madden and they never came through, uh, you know, this is the type of stuff we were expecting. And so if you like that next gen stat type of stuff, FC like really does a great job providing all of this information to you at halftime and after matches. So, as you guys know, I rate my games on an obscure scale, if you even want to call it a scale, and I use kind of weird analogies to compare the games that I uh, review. So, how do I rate FC25? I give it a really good buffet. <laughs> a, a good buffet provides a large variety of food options, you know, from fried chicken to sushi, and you got crab legs, prime rib, and everything in between. You pay a single price up front and then you can just go and eat whatever you want until your stomach explodes. And while none of the food is like particularly amazing, it's all usually really good for the most part. But like any restaurant with a large menu, they don't specialize in any particular dishes. And that's kind of what FC25 is. It's, it does a lot of things well and is loaded up with features and game modes and various ways to play like online friendlies and online seasons co-op seasons, 5v5 rush, clubs classic, training drills, 3v3, tournament options, you got home and away series, you have manager mode, player mode, like there's a lot going on. There's so many different ways you can play this game. The gameplay has improved from the previous years and I think this game has something for everybody, but it doesn't do anything great. The gameplay still has its issues with AI not understanding how to space themselves uh, or attacking the ball without you being in control. 3v3 is like a nice change of pace, but it feels like a cheap version of FIFA Street 2 uh, without any of the flair. Manager mode is loaded up with complex features, but the new UI makes completing tasks take longer than it should, and the player career mode is filled with great ideas that just haven't been improved in the last few years. So FC25 is, yeah, it's like a jack of all trades, master of none. Nothing in particular stands out and makes it great, but it's a good game. I think if you're a clubs player, FC25 is a must buy. Like the new gameplay mechanics and the addition of that 5v5 rush has really improved clubs a lot. Uh, the fact that manager mode and player career haven't changed much, I can't say I really recommend. Dude, I'm recording here. <laughs> it's my dog again. I can't say I recommend you paying $70 if you already have FC23 and 24. Uh, if you haven't played FIFA, and well, I guess since it was called FIFA, I also do think this game is worth the money. It just, it really depends on what you're looking for. I mean, FC25 
plays more realistically than 24. Clubs has seen an improvement and the adjustment of tactics on the fly and having more control over than over your tactics than ever before, I think makes this a great soccer game. FC 25 is great, but like I said, it depends on what kind of mode you want to play and what you want out of it is, you know, if it makes it worth it for you or not. That's it for me, guys. Hope you enjoyed this review from a, you know, casual soccer fan. And uh, yeah, until next time, peace.